Penny and these are the Kid Vision Kids and we're here today to find out about wildlife we might find in our backyard. Well that's awesome. Welcome to the Sawgrass Nature Center and Wildlife Hospital. Um, we're standing in front of a beautiful mural that actually has over 50 animals in it and most of these animals you actually have seen in your yards or maybe on the playground. So does anybody see any animal that they've seen maybe on the playground? Maybe something that lives in a tree? Carter, do you see an animal that you've seen in your backyard? A hawk. A hawk, yes. Ooh. We have lots of hawks in Florida. What about the animal right behind you? Oh, do you know what that is? That's a raccoon. So this mural is called Our Backyard Wilderness, and that's what we're going to find out about today. Are you ready? Yeah. All yes. right, so we're going to go and see our first animal now. All right, let's go. So now, children, look what, what do you see up here? Oh, wow. Wow. My name is uh, Critter Kim and I am one of the volunteers and wildlife rehabbers here at Sawgrass Nature Center. Poyo is a permanently injured um, great horned owl. These guys will eat almost anything. Owls typically hunt with their ears. They have very sensitive ears. You see the little tufts on the top of his head? You can tell whether he's angry or upset by looking at those tufts. These talons that he has right here are extremely powerful. If you happen to notice his feathers, it looks like tree bark. Um, they will sit there and be perfectly still and most of the time you'll have no idea that they're there. And is this owl native to Florida? Yes, ma'am. Oh, look at that. He's a nice little rooster. This is uh, Marsal, chicken Marsal. He will eat seed, grain, um, pieces of bread, which we don't typically want to feed birds. But uh, he Why will... don't you want to feed them bread? Bread is actually not very good for any bird, um, not even ducks. <laughs> Can you hear him? Can you make that sound? Listen. What happens? What do we do if we find a bird that's injured? Um, well, one of the first things, if you find a bird, uh, especially a baby bird, the first thing that we always ask is that you actually wait and observe first to see if there's any parents around. A lot of times fledglings, um, they don't learn to fly up. What they do is they fall down out of a tree and then learn to fly. But if it is completely injured, you get it to a wildlife rehabber. Um, and if people don't have one in their area, the best other options are calling a local zoo or calling a, a local vet um, and seeing if they have any good advice for you. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> now we're going to talk about reptiles. Let's talk about what makes a reptile a reptile. Let's think of some things that they all have in common. Scales, scales that's right. So all reptiles have scales. What about how they have babies? They lay eggs. They lay eggs, very good. The last thing is they are cold-blooded. And what that means is their body temperature is usually about the same as their surroundings. So what's the biggest difference between a turtle and a tortoise? Um, mainly of where they live. Um, and then they will have features on their bodies that will help them live in that area. Turtles live in the water. They have webbed feet so they can swim. Tortoises live on land. They have claws on their feet so they can dig in the dirt. Ah, look at okay. This. Now we know it's an alligator because of the shape of his mouth. You see how his mouth is is wide. And is that native to Florida? It is. This is our um, Florida uh, state reptile. So he's <laughs> super a massage. soft. The bottom feels soft. Soft, and the top feels kind of rough. This is actually one of my favorite animals. This is Cory. Cory is a rat snake, and rat snakes, like you said, are not venomous, right? And that means that if they um, want to eat something, they don't bite it and squirt venom into it. So if they want to eat something, they just squeeze it. You want to touch him? Look how his body is covered in scales. Two finger touch, very gentle. It feels a little squishy. <laughs> it feels a little squishy. So does it feel like the turtle? No. No, it's different, but it is a reptile. Now, 
what are we going to learn about? We're going to learn about a different animal now. So, so far we've learned about things with feathers and scales. Now we're going to learn about an animal that has hair or fur. And I brought a little animal to visit with us. So does anybody know what kind of animal this is? Yes, ma'am. Possum. It is. It's an opossum, but we call it a possum for short. That's kind of a nickname. And an opossum is a real special animal, and it belongs to a group of animals called mammals. And guess what? We belong to that group. Mammals have hair. Do we have hair? Yes. This one has fur, but it has hair or fur. And they actually give birth to little babies, like little live babies, so they don't lay eggs. And just like our moms, she would feed her baby milk. And so she actually is a special type of mammal called a marsupial. And marsupials even have something even more special. Go ahead. Pouches. Pouches or pockets, that's right. Can you think of another animal that has pouches or pockets? Yes. What do you think? Kangaroo. Kangaroo, what else? Koalas. Koalas, okay. So koalas, kangaroos, and opossums are called marsupial or pouched animals. Let me flip her around so you guys can pet her back. What does she feel like when you pet her? She's so soft. Soft. That's your tail. fluffy, right? Oh, oh and her tail, tail is not it's soft. Feels scary. Does she feel warm or cold? Warm. That's right, because she's a warm-blooded animal. So that's another trait of mammals is they're warm-blooded like that's we are. Nice. So we want to end our field trip to learn about pet responsibility. How do we take care of these pets? What do you think pets need every single day? Food. Food and? Water. And? Air. Yeah, they need air and maybe some attention. Bumper is a Greek tortoise. Do you think that we would find him in our backyards? No. no, we shouldn't find him in our backyards. But he was someone's pet, and unfortunately, they couldn't take care of him anymore. Um, so we took him in um, to take care of him for the rest of his life. So Bumper has a unique talent. You wonder why he's called Bumper? Just stand really still. He won't hurt you. He's checking you out. Oh, that's why we call him Bumper. Because he likes to bump. So this is a bearded dragon. Where is he from? He's actually native to Australia. So these animals that come from different countries, people bring them, and then they should be responsible for their pets. That's they right. They take care so, of them, but sometimes they don't. They just let them go. Exactly. So if you want a pet, a good way to get a pet, after you learn all about that pet, is to look for one that needs a home, that needs to be adopted. But make sure that if you get a pet, that you take care of it every day, for the whole time it lives. If you have a pet, you need to take care of it. You need to give it shelter and food and water and love. And so we want to thank you so much for bringing us here and letting us experience all these wonderful animals that you, you have are at your welcome. nature center.